let's welcome back to the program retired astrophysicist and astronomy instructor Laird Whitehill. Thanks so much for, for joining us again. The end here, we just heard them say they've made our world a better place. You've watched the work of these rovers over the many years that they've been active. What did they give you? What did you most value from what those rovers collected? Um, you know, it's a very emotional uh, answer to a question like that because the rovers were more than anything an emotional experience for me and for so many others. The, the science that they did was important and part of, a, of an ongoing question about life and on Mars and elsewhere. So the answers they came up with uh, about life, about water, uh, was only part of what got me excited. The, the part that got me excited was the adventure, the things that human beings were able to do on Earth to fix the problems that occurred on Mars. There were opportunities spent almost 15 years on the surface of, of the planet. And almost from the very beginning, it had problems. Uh, one of the most spectacular problems, for example, was the fact that a heater um, malfunctioned very early on. And the way they decided to, to fix it was to turn the whole spacecraft off at night so that the heater wouldn't run all the time. Right. And in the end, when the dust storm finally wiped out the spacecraft, that heater probably ran all night and drained the batteries. So they, the thing that caused the problem 15 years before probably killed the spacecraft 15 years later. It's amazing. It was solving problems like that. Right. But finally, yes. You, you mentioned, though, you mentioned water. And, and how it almost felt emotional to you that that yes. data came back. And you know, it often happens that data gathered by these kinds of, of machines and these space missions, it actually just goes over the public's head. But what was so remarkable about this mission is that it came down to something simple but remarkable, finding water on Mars. Not only did they find water, uh, which they expected to find, and they found again and again, uh, they found the kind of water they were looking for. Mostly for the first, for the first uh, part of the mission, the Opportunity mission, they found water that was acetic uh, and, and uh, was basically sulfuric acid water. And they kept finding that kind of water again and again, and that's not conducive for life at all. That's interesting. But 11 years into a 90-day mission, 11 years into a 90-day mission, they found drinkable water. Right. That had been on the surface of Mars. Let me ask you this. Um, there had been a lot of talk. We'll talk about the future of the organization now and space exploration. There had been a lot of talk about how NASA had, in a sense, kind of passed its glory days. You know, that the costs had become too prohibitive uh, since reaching the heights of, of putting a man on the moon, for example, and launching these very high-profile manned missions um, before. But do you think... At this point now, space exploration can get back uh, the high profile it had and eventually merit even more investment so that space exploration can move forward into the, the next generation. Yeah, I, 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 the, I think the United States has picked up uh, speed in that regard. Uh, I think they let the ball drop for a decade or more. Uh, I think they have some grand plans to get back in the game. And uh, their, uh, their plans, in, in my opinion, is, are not grand enough, but I'm sure that we can pick up speed given our past history of having gotten to the moon first. We can do it any time we set our minds to it. Just put enough money behind it and we're there. We have the capability to get there before the Chinese if we want to. Hmm. And we may, in fact, do that. We may not. You know, it depends upon what the money allocated in the years to come. Right. Thousands on top of yes. thousands of images were sent back by the Mars rover. I have to ask you, did you have a favorite image, something you saw that actually just yes. caught you by surprise? Go ahead. Yeah. 
Oh, well, there were quite a few, but the but my very favorites are of uh, this um, uh, picture taken at the edge of a crater called uh, Victoria Crater, and uh, pictures of a particular cliff escarpment called uh, uh, Cape Verde gives you a real sense of what it was like to be on Mars in that place. And, and actually, they entered the crater at Cape Verde. So it's one of the most spectacular places they've ever been on Mars. Okay, Laird Whitehill. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us on this edition of the Newsmakers.